Assalamu alaikum man. what's up everyone? Welcome back to another vlog. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about another tutorial. We're gonna be doing basics of Lightroom. So how to get into Lightroom and start editing. You took the cool photos, now you wanna take them out of here, put them into this computer and start editing. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's begin. So this is gonna be our photo right over here. One, two, three, there we go. So first thing I wanna do, all right, so this is a Sony A7R4 and I am going to take the SD card out. This is a 2018 MacBook, so it doesn't take SD cards. So I have an SD card reader, all right? You can buy any of them, it doesn't matter the brand. This is by Apple. All right, now I'm gonna enter it through my USB port. And you guys are probably thinking I'm going pretty basic here, but we're going to do everything from A to Z. This way, everyone understands fully on how to import the photos and how to edit them. All right. So as soon as I popped in my SD card, my computer picked it up. Yeah, we got two photos right here. I am going to hit import on the photo. Now, before I hit import, I want to show you this. So there's two photos that have check marks on them. All right, you want to make sure that the check marks are on them, and then you want to import them wherever you're editing your photos. So if this is the first time you're doing this, you're going to have to, on the right-hand side here, choose a place that you're going to have your database stored. Make sure that it's safe. I prefer, uh, if you look here on my screen, you'll see I have SSD and I have also a 4TB backup. This is some old data that's just backed up. I plugged it in just for now, but I'm going off of my SSD. All right, uh, I am going to go to exactly where I import the photos, this way, boom. And I'm just going to hit import. Once I hit import, the photos will start coming in, and there we go. All right, so we got two photos, one, two, and background's completely dark. It's purposely done just to show that we got a photo in there. So that's how you import a photo. All right. Now let's go into editing a photo. All right. So this was a raw photo and has no edits done to it. And I'm going to show you how to use Lightroom. Basic steps. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm not going to do any masking. I'm not going to do any uh, radio filters or anything like that. We might touch up on some radio filters, possibly. All right. So now, first thing I want to do before I start editing is I want to make sure that I click on the develop tab on the top right corner. All right. Because you can't do anything. If you look around, all you have right now, if you're in the library section, the only thing that you see on the left hand side is all your images, your databases, your folders, uh, your collections, uh, any published services that you're connected to. Uh, on the right hand side, you just see the information on the particular on the photo that you're actually on. All right. You want if you want to start editing, you would go to the develop tab. But before we do that, let's look back here on the left side where the navigator button is. All right. So we, you can toggle the switch up and down. OK, so if you want to get a preview window, you have some options here. You can fit, you can fill, you can go one by one. You can go one by two, and there's some more options if you click on the drop down. Fit kind of works for us right now. So we're just going to click on fit, and it fits the screen right in the middle. I'm able to go and edit. I can see the entire photo. If I want to zoom in, I just take my mouse pointer. There's a little plus with a magnifier on it. I click anywhere, and it takes me in. If I want to zoom out, click on it again, it zooms me right out. All right. So now we're ready to go to the develop tab. Once I click on develop, you'll notice on the right hand side, a whole bunch of tools open up for you. So it's, uh, you, you, this is the modules that you're going to use to start editing. All right, going from the top, let me explain what some of the stuff is. Um, again, I don't want to take it. This is a, a basics course, so I don't want to take it too crazy, but We'll, we'll, we'll just go from the top. So here you have temperature and tint. Temperature and tint are very important. Now, many people like to leave them on auto, and that kind of works. But if you like to get a little bit more creative, 
or really have the viewers feel or see the mood that you've actually that you shot or you want them to feel that's where you start playing around with the temperature just know that when you go towards the left side it's more towards the blue which makes things feel a little cooler colder if you go towards the right it makes things feel a little warmer so it is yellow to blue and then it, yeah, obviously the colors in between and if you double tap on temp so take the mouse pointer okay and double tap it zeroes it out to where the photo was taken at with the auto white balance or the I'm sorry the the auto temperature that it was set on it takes it right back to that which was 7100 in this case tint if you go to the right you add you're adding more magenta if you go to the left you're bringing in the green so it's G and M that you're playing with uh, in short see how it looks too green now if you double click on tint it takes you right back to zero to where it was set on auto in the camera or maybe it wasn't set on auto maybe this just was the setting in the camera so it zeroes it right back out to, to its original form all right going down below that now this is this is where things get a little fun so you have exposure contrast highlights shadows let's go one by one uh, so if the photo is a little too dark, you can bring up the exposure. So if I go to the right, if I go too far to the right, it's overexposed. If I go to the left, now, again, same thing here. If I double click on exposure, it takes it right back to zero. Pretty cool, right? Now, if I go to the left, negative, everything is super, super dark and super underexposed. So now you know the extremes of the exposure you need to find the right balance to tweak it to where it makes sense for you all right we're going to zero that out real quick uh, actually you know what we're going to start editing line by line all right so the exposure here i'm going to bring it up a little bit for now okay i'm going to do plus 40. now we're going to go to contrast so contrast is really important it could be your best friend and it could also be your worst enemy it can really help the photo come to life or it can really damage it. Usually when we're first starting off, we're excited about two things, contrast and saturation. So we tend, up, we, we tend to bump up the contrast, bump up the saturation, and we're excited about the colors and the way it's looking. But then after you start editing for a while, you start looking back at your photos and you start saying to yourself, wow, what did I do, right? So it's good to understand the levels and what these options do for the for the image so now let's check it out if we take contrast and stretch it all the way to the right we, we're really bumping up the contrast we're separating colors and doing things like that if we bring it all the way to the left we just remove all the contrast and it's looking very 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 flat now flat is not always a bad thing because there's always there's always ways to mess around with the colors to really bring it to the photo to bring it to life but too flat might be you know, depending on your taste. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to drop the contrast to minus 20. All right. I'm going to leave it at minus 20 because I want to add in some of the other, I want to use some of the other options to bring the photo out and, and create a nice balance between the contrast. Highlights. Highlights is very important. So when you when there's clipping on the photo, uh, clipping is when you you have one area like over here, for example, uh, the lights are pretty strong. So if you dial down the highlights, you can probably recover some of the details on that. So let's see if I hold my finger on the highlight switch and I drop it down. I want you to notice something if I drop it all the way down this curve wasn't here before now it is see if i bring it back up it's gone right if i bring it down we got some details that are coming to life so dropping the highlights is really really important when you're editing because it actually helps you recover those blown out areas you, know, you recover all those the, the, the strong light that was in there maybe they have clouds that were lost you bring down the highlights, you bring them back to life. Now, if you do the opposite, if you bump up the highlights, everything's overexposed and it, you got weird stuff happening. Cool. All right, we're going to zero it out. Same thing. Double click on highlights and it brings it back to zero. 
So in my case here, I am going to drop the highlights, though, before we go over to the next one. We're going to drop it down to, say, minus 40. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to double click on highlights, bring it back to zero, zoom back out. I want to show you an option here on your histogram. So on your histogram, see this little triangle? This triangle should not be white in most cases. Some cases, for creative reasons, you, it, it, it goes white. White means that it's clipping. It actually shows, says that show highlight clipping. So if I click on it, I could see where it's clipping. So now if you look what it did here, it marked it in red for me. See? So if I unclip it, look at that. I could see what areas are clipping. And that's the area that I want to target. So I want to adjust my highlights. I want to bring it down as much as possible. Looks like right there, clipping goes away. Yep, it's not clipping anymore. You see the triangle turned gray. It's neutral now. So I am going to leave my highlights about right there. My shadows. Shadows is another very, very important one. Highlights and shadows is what we tend to focus on when we first learn when we first start learning how to edit. Uh, everything else is very important, but these two really bring they they are step one to creating the foundation of a beautiful edit. So if I take my shadows, so there's a lot of dark areas that I need to bring out in the photo. If I start taking the shadow slider to the right, I start bringing out the foreground. Everything that's dark comes to light. Now maybe that's a little too much. So I'm removing a lot of the shadows and I kind of want the shadows in there because what happens is then all the ambient lights that were in the area begin to show. And then I got a lot of orange that shows, which is not what I'm looking for, right? So I'm gonna dial down. I'm gonna go to about, say 60% for now. You could always come back and adjust it. Uh, you know what, make it 50%. Pick plus 50, I'm sorry, plus 50. So on the shadows, we went plus 50. Now, let me show you what happens if we go the opposite way, obviously. So too much, too dark, start dimming it out. Okay, going back up, plus 50. Now, in the darks, just like the highlights, you have this guy right here. So this triangle will show you what blacks need to be brought out more, what areas are too dark. Uh, so let's see. If I, okay, I went a little too fast. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to this one on the next step with the blacks. All right, so the shadows were good. We're at plus 50. Uh, let's go to the whites, and then we'll discuss what that little triangle does by the histogram for the blacks. All right. Your whites are very important. You can't forget about your whites because if you bring them all the way up, you just messed up the photo. And if you bring them all the way down, just like everything else, the photo begins to look a little dull. It's missing the whites you took it out. Uh, in some cases, it might be strong, so you have to make that adjustment. But it's subtle touches are good enough. So if you bring it down, in this case, maybe you can bring it up a little bit. Yeah, actually, in this case, I am going to keep it at plus 20 for my whites. Actually, plus 5. And I'll tell you why I did plus 5. If you look at the triangle on top of my histogram, I'm trying to monitor where it clips. So it clips at, let's see, right now it's not clipping. Right now it's good, actually. There's a show highlight clipping. So the blue is okay, and my whites are fine. I'm going to keep them at plus 11. We're good to go. Now the blacks. Blacks is where things go wrong sometimes. Uh, you really got to know how to adjust your blacks. So if I take the slider for the blacks, Look what happened because I clicked on the triangle here. So I'm going to click on this little triangle. Actually, right when I hover over it, if you look at the photo, so I'm hovering over this little triangle. If you look at the photo now, right in the center, you'll notice there's some blue going on. It's showing you what, what needs to be brought out more. So the shadows clipping. This is clipping for the shadows now. So it's too dark. Underneath that boat is too dark. In fact, if I drop my blacks all the way down, look what happens to the water. Everything starts turning black. And that's how the image starts to get lost. So what you want to do is you want to adjust the blacks to where it makes sense. Sometimes you're going to have clipping. Sometimes clipping is necessary. It's okay. 
but you just want to find that fine line to where the photo looks good. So right now, I'm going to bring up my, well, it is a nighttime shot, so I don't want to bring it up too much. I'm going to drop my blacks to minus 20. There is clipping underneath the boat. But now this is more style-based. It's, it's, uh, this is the, the, the style that I'm looking for for this particular edit. All right. Texture. All right. So here I'm going to show you what texture, clarity, and dehaze do, which add to your creative element. This is the presence. All right. So if I take the texture slider, if I slide it to the right, so, oh, let me turn off my clipping. Okay, here we go. If I slide it to the right and slide it to the left, you'll notice something happening. You notice kind of like a little blur. All right, so the texture, the richness, the details of the wood come out more when I slide it to the right. If you're taking a photo of a model or there's a human subject in there, you need to be really careful. And this is where you need to use some masks because you're going to ruin the skin and you're going to start having some weird stuff happen. So you really need to be careful with that. So you got to be a little sensitive when it comes to texture and clarity. All right. If I drop it too low, it looks dreamy. It looks like it's uh, a dream, I guess, you know, I guess you could say. Uh, but I want some details in there because this is a nice boat on the water. I want to bring it up to about 40. Let's see, 41 is good. Clarity does something a little similar, all right? It just clears up the surfaces and it, it actually enhances the light to where now we are clipping a little bit more. So if I drop the clarity, it also takes away the, uh, uh, the fine details on the wood and in the area. And if I add it in there, it kind of brings that roughness back to life. I usually use clarity when the uh, when I when I have some stones, rocks in front of me, bring those out more. It really, really looks nice. So here I'm gonna put my clarity at say about 35% for now, 35 plus 35, and let me zoom back out. All right, and now dehaze. All right, dehaze also works out good when you're blending, when you're trying to bring out clouds, when you're trying to bring out some more details that sometimes could be a little lost. So if I, it darkens the image and kind of begins to spread temperature and color. So look what happens, what's happening to the sky. It's turning a little bit more blue. But if I do this, this looks very amateuristic. So it looks like more like an amateur. So you don't want to go overboard with it. Sometimes you can, depending on what's happening in your sky. You know, sometimes if it's foggy or if it's hazy and you want to cut through it and clear it all up, you might have to use that option. So right now, I'm actually going to stay at about, yeah, you know what, uh, plus 40 is okay for now. Remember, we could always go back and adjust. Vibrance. Vibrance is fun. Vibrance brings out color. But it also makes it look like you just drew with crayons all over the place. If you'd like your photos to be colorful, vibrance is a good way to start. So you bring up the vibrance, and I'm going to bring it to 20, plus 20. If I drop it all the way down, Look what happens. There is some color in there, but it almost looks black and white. It actually looks kind of cool. You could actually do an Instagram post that looks just like that. And some people do. So this is another way to get really creative is learn how to use the tools and then learn how to apply your creativeness to these tools. So now you got like somewhat of a black and white image with some, uh, you know, chromatic. Uh, you got some, you got some orange in the sky. Looks kind of cool. All right. But that's not what we're looking for right now. So I'm going to bump my vibrance up to plus 15 for now. Saturation. Saturation, remember what I said before, saturation and contrast. Best friends, worst enemies. If you know how to use them, you'll be fine. If you're still getting used to it, here's what's going to happen. You get stuff like this. And the colors are just bleeding all over the place. So if I zoom in here, my colors are just everywhere. Look, there's a little bit of orange on here because I, and then the, the orange is spilling over to the other side and yellow is everywhere. So that's not the style I'm looking for. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Uh, some people like that style. 
if you if you do it intentionally, it can come off as creative, and people can tell when you're doing it intentionally because there's a few things that you've adjusted and it looks nice. Uh, but if you're just doing it because you don't know how to adjust it properly, then it comes off like you need practice. So you want to edit like a pro and you want to understand how to use these tools to apply them properly. Now, with me, myself, saturation, because vibrance I've messed with a little, I tend not to go over 2 to 4, plus 2, plus 4 with saturation. If I need it to come back a little bit, I will. But right now, I'm going to keep it on plus 4. All right, and we are going down. All right, to tone curves. Tone curves, really, really important, guys. Uh, I'm going to show you a trick uh, that's, well, it's not a trick. <laughs> this is what most people commonly do in photography, editors that are experienced. They do what's called the S-curve, all right? So they just take their highlights, they bring them up a little, they take their lights, bring them up a little, they take their darks, drop them down a little, take their shadows, drop them down a little bit more, and you begin to have what's called an S. So it looks like an S. Pretty cool, right? And this is where you would adjust more. So right now I got my little S going. I would go back and adjust my blacks and my shadows a little bit. Uh, but right now we're gonna move down a little. And we have HSL and we have color. When you click on HSL, you can adjust hue, saturation, luminance, all, and you can go one by one, and you can just really go crazy. So, for example, if I wanted to play with the orange, uh, if I dial it up, dial it down or up, if I go to minus 100, dial it down, if you see what happens to the image. It goes completely red. And if I go complete opposite, it goes completely yellow. So just like everything, you need to find that middle ground. Uh, another thing you could do, uh, so what I normally do is I click on color, and I got them broken down one by one, and if I need to adjust my reds a little, I'll do that. In this case, I'm not going to mess with too many of the colors. Uh, there is some yellow in there that I'd like to bring down, so I can either dial the saturation down from the yellow. Play with the hue just a little bit, make it more towards the orange. Or if I don't like the orange, I can do the opposite. I can completely turn down the saturation. Look what happens to the image. It goes to show you how much orange is in there, right? If I go the opposite, it looks a little insane, right? So finding that middle point is what I'm trying to do that I'm happy with. And we are good here. Say plus two on the saturation. Uh, luminance is here. Look how bright and how dull those colors will get when you mess with luminance for each color. So I tend not to mess with luminance too much unless there's something creative that I'm working on that I'm really trying to bring out. Sliding down. So you have an idea of what the colors do now. Split toning. Split toning is one of my favorite. You have highlights and you have shadows. You could actually bring out colors that are in your highlights and colors that are in your shadows separately without messing the entire image up. So here's an example. If I like the magenta or the orange look or the red look a little bit more, I would keep the hue at zero and I would start dialing up the saturation. When I dial up the saturation, notice how the colors begin to shift a little with my highlights. So everything that has strong highlights in it begins to turn towards the pinkish magenta color. If I go too high, it starts turning into red. There's a little preview window of what your color is looking like. If I slide it down, it's a little bit pink. Yeah, there we go. So let's say I'm going to keep it at 2730. All right, shadows. Now, the hue in my shadows. I want to, let's just say, hey, you know what, I like blue, right? So I'm going to keep it at 245, give you an example, example of what I like. Then if saturation is at zero, nothing is happening. Everything is staying the same, all right? Uh, I am going to bring it up a little bit more. So if I bring the saturation up, the more I bring it up, look how those blues are adjusting with the pinks. It's starting to look 
kind of cool. Kind of like it. All right. So we're going to keep that at 30. Boom. I think I like that. I might even bring it up a little bit more later on, but right now we're going to keep it at 30 because I might mess with the temperature. Now, details, 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 details. All right. This is a very important one, guys. So hold on one second. All right. So if you want to see, see what I just did is I double clicked on the window that's over here, the preview window, and I slid down what I want to look at to bring out my details. Now, let's zoom back out completely. If I, let's see here, sharpening. It's nice to add a little bit of sharpness to the image depending on what the subject is. In this case, it's a boat. It's a nice yacht. It's a nice looking boat, luxury boat, right on the water. So I want to bring out some details. So I'm going to sharpen it up a little bit. Uh, let's just say we're going to keep it at 80. My radius. All right. If you hold your finger down on the option key on a Mac, uh, I believe it's Alt on Windows, and you begin to slide to the right, you'll start seeing the radius cover, which I find to be 2.6 to 2.7 is a good number. The details show. If I slide all the way to the left, they kind of blur a little. If I slide all the way to the right, they start coming in. Now, if I sharpen it a little bit more and then play with my radius, you'll notice them a little bit more. So, see that? So, now... Let's say the sharpening is at 125, and my radius is going to be at 2.7. I'm comfortable with that number. Details, same thing. If you hold your finger on the option key and then click on detail and begin to slide to the right, you'll start to see more details come in. Look at that. So if you keep your eye on this area here, watch what happens to the details. The rope starts to come in, so the details are showing more. There we go. Masking. This is another one. Hold your finger on the option key. If you slide to the left, it's plain Jane. If you slide to the right, you begin to reveal what's being masked and blended. All right. And then noise reduction. All right. So this, what we played here was sharpening at top. Now we're going to mess with the noise reduction. So going with luminous. Now, if I begin, I like to keep my luminous in the noise reduction area at around 90. My masking, I like to usually keep it at around 75. Say, you know what? Say 80. You can always go back and adjust it. Let's bring down the luminous to... 80 as well. Now remember guys, these settings don't apply to all images. Every image needs to be, you need to follow and edit for every single photo. Then unless you're taking the same photo over and over and over, then okay, you can copy and paste the entire edit, all the settings that you did, which I'll show you after. But you should take your time with each photo, use all the features, options, tools that they give you for each photo separately. All right? Uh, details for noise reduction, we're going to keep it midway, and contrast. So here, I'm going to zoom in here, for example, and I'm going to show you guys something. Uh, that's something that stands out. Let's say this right here. Now, if I go up on the contrast, there's going to be some noise. If I go down on the contrast, there's going to be some smoothness. So I add usually about five on the contrast, not too much, and then color this is noise reduction color you can bring this up if you'd like or you can keep it down uh, same with the details and smoothness these can stay the same bring them down noise reduction it's case by case you can zoom in to look at the details see how it affects the image and then make your adjustments accordingly scrolling down to lens correction all right now remove chromatic aberration we always want to put a check mark there we don't want chromatic aberration. Uh, I don't want to go into too many details about what chromatic aberration is. You guys could look it up or I'll do another tutorial on what chromatic aberration is. If, it's, if you guys want, put it in the comment section down below. 
uh, enable profile correction. Now this is automatically enabled for me, but let's say if it wasn't, that's what it would look like. If I turn it on, it automatically knows from the metadata on the, uh, on the photo, it's a Sony 16 to 35. That's the profile of the lens. That's the lens that I actually use. And it corrects the lens to, to fit those parameters. I'm sorry, corrects the image to fit the parameters of the lens. So it makes it lays everything out evenly. Now, transform. A couple things we could do here. We can hit auto, and it looks at your horizon, it looks at the poles, it looks like it looks at everything to see if uh, if things are standing upright or if they're even in the background in the horizon. Uh, so here, if we hit off, we'll take it back to what it was. It adjusts. Okay, so auto is a good place to start. If auto doesn't look good to you, then you can fine tune it. The way you would fine tune it is you can use uh, the uh, manual alignment tools that they have here. So guide upright tool. You can hit shift T as it tells you there, or you can just click right here. And what we would do here now is we would take our mouse pointer, put it on, say, the straight line here, make a nice solid straight line. And then we would find another area that needs, that should be straight. There we go. Let's just say this edge of the wood right here. And we don't want to go too far, so let's just say right there. Okay? Now, that is as straight as my eye can see using the tools and the images and the structures that are in the photo. I straightened out two poles, and usually that would bring the image upright. You know how sometimes when you're taking a photo from a high location looking down and you'll see buildings popping up like this? Well, if you use this guided tool, you straighten them out. Keep in mind, though, part of it will get cropped, so some of the image will get cut out, which we, which I explained actually in the panorama video, which you guys can check out. Uh, it could be right over here, or somewhere, somewhere on the screen. And I, I, I explained there how you should take extra photos to cover those white spaces because when you adjust, there was nothing here to begin with, right? So you have to fill those empty spaces. All right, that's what we do here. All right, so I'm happy with this. I'm happy with the alignment. I'm going to hit done. Cool. Now I feel like my image is straight. I'm good to go. Going down to effects. I don't mess with the effects too much here, but if, but we'll go over them. So if we slide to the left, this is a vignette. It looks nice sometimes. Sometimes you could really apply it and it looks good and you could feather it out. So you have white if you go all the way to the right, black if you go all the way to the left. And let's reset it. Let's say I want it a little a little vignette let's say the midway point I can adjust now so you can adjust there let's you'll notice it more when I do this so you can adjust the midway point you can bring it all the way out or you can see how you can play with it all right Maybe. all right roundness now this is important so you can have uh, what looks like you only rounded out the edges. So this is a vertical image. And if you look at the corners right here, they look round. They're no longer square. And if I go the opposite, it brings it all the way in. So you can adjust how round you want it, which is cool. Feather it out. This is kind of my favorite, you know, because soft, subtle touches, they really make the photo. So you can make it harsh edge. All right. See how now, now we can see all the details because we made the edges really round, really sharp. So we like to feather it out, though. If you feather it out, it just looks soft and nice. It gives it a nice touch. Highlights on it, same exact thing. If I bring this all the way up, okay. Uh, it's just highlights in the background that are, that are affected, to be honest with you, that from what I see. I never use these features. So in fact, all of these options, I'm going to zero them out, and we're good to go. Yeah, I don't use those too much. Calibration is another one I don't use too much. So if you need to do some type of calibration, you can look at the color, shadows, reds, primaries, greens, everything else that needs to be calibrated, you can adjust here so this way you can see it better. Cool. For the most part, we are just about done. Now, 
I myself would like to do some soft touches on this. There's a few features that I want to show you. I think I saw something that needs to be fixed or cleaned. Let me see if I can find it again. Let's just go to the stars. All right. So we got two stars here. They, you know, they don't look like fantastic stars, so they need to be fixed. The way we do it is on the top right over here, there is a spot removal tool. Now you can hit the letter Q or you can just hit spot removal. Then if you're using, you can make it larger and smaller just by scrolling the wheel on your mouse or on the trackpad, two fingers. All right, so I want to make it as small as possible and then click it. Gone, look at that. Amazing, right? Now there's another one here. I want to remove this one, click it, and it's gone, and we're good to go. So now we got two spots that are removed, and all it did was clone its surrounding, and it's good. Normally, I use Photoshop for spot removal. I just found that it works a lot better than Lightroom, so I would normally take this image into Photoshop, clean it up, bring it back into Lightroom, finish it off, and then we're good to go. Now, like I said, there is some fine touches that I want to do here. So to really make this photo stand out, I want to bring out my blacks more. I want to dial down the contrast more. I don't want too much contrast. And if I want to give it a little bit more of a warmer tone, I can do that just to see what would happen. Sometimes it looks cool. So this is what it's looking like right now. If I drop it towards a cooler temperature, it looks like really early in the morning. Notice, see how that shifted really quick? All right, but that's not what I'm looking for. So I want that nice balance. So I'm gonna make it a little bit warmer and maybe even adjust my tint slightly and bring up my exposure a little bit more. The photos come into life. Now, there's a couple of things I wanna show you. If you look at the histogram, we got some blown out spots, right? We got some clipping going on here. Look at that. So if I hover over the uh, highlights, it shows where the clipping is. And if it was important to me, what I would do is I would take a little mask, radial filter right over here. Okay. And then I would draw this mask right around this area. Okay. And put it right there where it was clipping and I would drop my highlights so here I'm click on that again then I would start to drop my highlights look what's happening that red is going away so if I'm dropping those highlights that red is disappearing clipping is going away right isn't that cool so this way I'm only dropping the highlights only on that one spot keeping the rest of the image the way I like it right now, again, I said something very important, if it was important to me. So sometimes there, it is important to me. So uh, there was a shot that I took of the downtown Dubai area, and the signboards were completely overexposed, completely blown out. So what I did is I drew a mask on that, dropped the highlights. I was able to retain all that data, all that information that's on those signs, bring them back, and it made the photo look cool. Or else there would have been just plain white signs, and that's not what I was looking for. All right. I think we got pretty much everything down. I'm going to hit done. All right. I like my image. I don't care too much that there's some clipping going on here and there. I'm okay with that. It doesn't bother me as much. Now, I want to crop this image for Instagram. So since this is a vertical image, I'm going to click on the crop tool, okay, which looks like the marching ants gives me a huge square that's broken up into the rule of thirds. I'm going to click on original and drop it down to four by five. When I click four by five, this is giving me now the exact Instagram height, four by five, eight by 10, all right? So now I need to choose where do I crop, all right? You never wanna do this. You just cut off part of the boat, top of a building. And, and unless it's part of your creative process where you have something else that it's being focused on, then it's okay. But 
if in this case the boat is my subject so I don't want to crop the boat but now cropping the bottom I'm okay with it I just I don't like this part right here if I wanted to I can take it into Photoshop remove that uh, I have other videos on how to do that but maybe what I can do is I can take the bottom right corner and bring it up a little there we go and hit done let's see how that looks I think that looks a little bit better what do you guys think uh, it's more centered uh, I am gonna dial down the texture and clarity a little bit and my dehaze is a little too strong see remember how I was telling you guys you could always go back and fix and that's what we're doing we go back and adjust to really bring the colors to life and there we are I think I'm happy with the image uh, you know in all honesty I would spend more time on it and really make it perfect only because I love doing it but I don't want to waste your time so I think we covered just about everything here if we had clouds I would show you other things that you could do but there, there are no clouds in this image so we'll just save it for another uh, another tutorial. Now, how to export this image? You can go to File, Export, or you can hit Shift Command E. Either way works, right? I'm gonna hit Shift Command E. I've already have a, sp a folder that I've chosen. So if you haven't, and this is the first time you're doing this, click the drop down. Choose a location that you want them stored and start saving them there. And then your settings. So here's the settings that I have here. Uh, let's see here. If I go down to file settings, quality, I have it at 100. Image format is going to be JPEG. Color space is sRGB. That's what I'm using. You do have some other options there. You can use Adobe RGB, Profoto, and Display P3. I'm using sRGB. I'm good with that. I've been using it for a while. If you want to resize it, you can just put a check mark here and put the exact size, resolution, pixels per inch, everything else that you want in there. I don't need to do that. Sharpen 4. Here's where you can choose some options matte paper, glossy paper, or screen. This is going to be for social media for me, so I'm going to clip, keep it on screen. The amount is going to be high. So I'm going to, I like my images sharp for, uh, uh, for mobile phones, for everything else. Cool. That's the way I want it. I like it that way. Watermark. I have a watermark in there. If not, you can just add a watermark. You can create one for yourself or not. You can just leave it alone. Then we're going to hit export. And once you hit export, it starts doing its thing. It drops it. It's, it's rendering the file and you are good to go. That's it. Done. This is basics of Photoshop. Uh, I know it took a little long, but I think it's going to come in handy. It's going to help you out. If you take your time, you can always rewind, do things all over again, and you're good to go. So I hope this was helpful. Our image is right on the screen right now. And... There it is. There's my watermark, and this is the colors, and we're good to go. This is good to post right now. I'll just airdrop it to my phone, load it onto Instagram, put in my caption and hashtags, and we are good. All right, guys, if you have any questions about how I did this photo edit or anything that I missed, please drop them in the comment section down below. If you want to see more of these images or how on my day-to-day -day editing, uh, photography things that I do, you can check me out on Instagram right over here, TG from Dubai. Or, um, and that, guys, if you like these tutorials, please give me a like, a comment, and a subscribe, tap the bell, do all these things. It really matters. It really helps. I spend a lot of time putting together these videos, and I'm doing them just to really help you guys out and, and teach you what I've learned. It's, it's nice to learn from people that have already learned uh, and, and, and you get the perspective and their point of view and their creativity. Cool. Thanks for tagging along. Appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Salaam alaikum.